Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our hope. Amen. Darmok and Jalad at Tanagra. You thought it wasn't going to get any more ridiculous, didn't you? If you're a Star Trek fan, you got that right away. In fact, you know exactly where the message is going this morning, probably. Because you got that right away. If you're not a Star Trek fan, please don't stop listening. Please don't roll your eyes and say, oh, no, Robin's going to do one of those pop culture reference things again that we don't know anything about. Because that is kind of the point. I'm coming to that. Darmok is a famous episode, probably one of the most famous episodes. It's certainly one of the most talked about episodes of uh, any of the Star Trek series. Because the premise of the episode is really fascinating. See, Captain Picard and the Enterprise encounter these aliens uh, who speak. They, they can understand the words that they say and the grammar because they've got the universal translator, right? Wouldn't it be cool if we had one of those? We could understand every language. Because they can. All the words and all the grammar. But they don't understand what they're saying. It just seems to be gibberish. See, spoiler alert, what it's all about is that they've encountered a race of people who speak entirely in allegories. Now, last week I was, I was talking about metaphors and the parables and things, but allegories, they're, they're part of that same family, but allegories are way more complicated because allegories are entire stories. For example... Darmok and Jalad at Tanagra. It turns out, and this is how the episode progresses, Picard figures this out, because the captain of the other ship sends himself and Picard down to the surface and arms them both, not in the hopes that they'll fight each other and one of them will win, and thereby that'll be the one who wins the battle, but because he hopes that they'll get together and fight the common enemy that he knows is on that planet. They do, of course, and then Picard figures it out and gets back just in time because in the meantime, the two ships have started to fight each other. In other words, Darmok and Jalad were great warriors in that, that, those people's history, and they came to battle but instead of fighting each other, they ended up finding, fighting a common enemy, the Beast of Tanagra. And because they came together to do that, they became great friends. And that's what the captain of the other ship was hoping would happen, is that Picard would understand that, and they would become friends, not enemies. But you wouldn't get that if you didn't know all of the stories of that culture. It would just sound like meaningless nothing. It took, it took the experience of doing it to figure that out. Because, in fact, one of the points that's made at the end of this episode is we don't know our stories well enough to be able to do that. And this is one of the reasons this episode, this storyline is so talked about is because some people go, ooh, that's awesome, wouldn't, that's amazing, wouldn't it be great if we all knew our stories? And others will say, except, first of all, not everyone understands the point of the story the same. Secondly, we don't know all our stories. Of course we don't, because are we talking about knowing our stories globally? What about local stories? What about community stories? What about national stories? There are too many. There's just too many. We couldn't possibly, you couldn't possibly do that. Except we do. David and Goliath at Ella. So I've confused that already, right? Because I've already talked about a story in which two combatants come together and become friends through fighting a common enemy. And that's not what happens with David and Goliath, is it? Is it? 
Maybe it is. Hang on. And Ella is a place, right? That's the valley where they come to, to do battle. The Israelites and the Philistines in the story. And you know how the story goes. I read a much different and yet the same version of that story. Because the way the story goes in the Bible is, of course, that David uses a sling and he throws a stone that hits Goliath in the forehead and knocks him down. Quite often we tell the story, by the way, as that's how David defeats him. It isn't. It's how he knocks him to the ground. David then runs forward, pulls off his helmet, takes out the guy's own sword, and cuts his head off. Yeah, that's how the story goes. We tend to not tell it that way because quite often it's a story we tell to children because David is little and he wins. The thing is, when I say David and Goliath to you, you immediately have an idea of what I mean by that. And what I mean is an underdog situation where there's a little guy and a big guy and the little guy wins. Maybe... Because quite often now we use that expression, David and Goliath, to simply refer to the context of little versus big, not necessarily the end result. And that might be in sports. It might be in politics. It might be in business. Little family-owned business on Main Street versus the big corporation that owns branches across the country. David and Goliath. In fact, Goliath has taken on a whole meaning itself, right? If you use that word to describe somebody, people instantly know you mean someone who is huge and strong and powerful. The thing is, that's not what the story's about. It's not about little defeats big. That's not the point. Nor is it that David is creative and smart about how he does it, although he kind of cheats, doesn't he? I mean, realistically, Goliath would have stepped out with his shield and his spear and his sword, wearing armor, expecting a combatant to do the same and fight hand to hand. David might as well have come out with a bow and arrow and shot him from a distance. He kind of cheated. Or... He was inspired to be creative. He was inspired to use a skill he knew he had. And maybe he wasn't, maybe he wasn't, see, I think he was scared, who wouldn't be, but he wasn't afraid. You know, in that same way that Jesus keeps on saying, don't be afraid? And really what Jesus means isn't, don't be scared, because, you know, you should be, (laughs) but Don't be afraid because you should know that God is with you. Whatever is happening, however it goes, God is with you. Now, you would think the rest of the Israelites would have thought that, being Israelites, but apparently it took David, a young boy, to step up and say, did you guys forget something fairly essential to our nature as a a culture and a people? Because you did. And that's that God is always with us. And the great thing about the story is that it's not God is always with us as in, I'll just stand out, call on God, and God will defeat Goliath for me. It's about how God inspires the strength of spirit and creativity and imagination in a boy to step forward and go, I could defeat this enemy, this is how. When we talk about God being with us, and how God cares for us and protects us. We don't simply mean we sit and do nothing. We mean the Spirit of God is alive in us, and that is the energy of life that inspires us to do good, that inspires us to connect with the essential good that is in us and find creative and and imaginative ways to live. The Spirit inspires. The, The word is even in there. Spirit inspires. That's what it's about. That's what that story is really about. Jesus and the disciples in the storm. Is it about how the power of God saves them? Because that's how we tell the story. Jesus steps up and commands the storm to be still. 
Little Jesus, big storm. But Jesus has the power of God on his side. God does it for us. Or, it's the storm that Jesus stills really about the fear amongst the disciples. Remember the disciples, some of whom are professional fishermen? What if the storm that Jesus stills is their fear? And instead of being afraid of the storm and being afraid that they're going to die and suddenly going, oh, let's just stop trying, it instead inspires them to ride out the storm to the other side. And then when Jesus says, why are you afraid? Why do you, why do you have so little faith? Maybe he means so little faith in yourself. That would certainly have been something David could have turned around and said to the rest of the Israelites. If our belief is that God is with us, inspiring us, and that spirit of life is in us, we should know it's okay to be scared, but not let the, the fear overwhelm that sense of spirit, of life that inspires us. So it's not about the storm being defeated, it's about us making it through and that God is with us as we get through it. We use these images all the time in life, don't we? The, the big and the small, David and Goliath. The storms of life. We use that imagery all the time. But the point isn't the point isn't the power of God defeating those things directly. The point is the power of God through us. The spirit of life, the spirit of good. Riding through those things, overcoming those things, getting to the other side, which is the main impetus of the story, isn't it? Jesus just wants to get to the other side. If the disciples had been smart, they would have said, why aren't we walking around? Clearly, there's a storm coming. But they don't. And instead, they ride out the storm and they get to the other side. Not only, not only do they get to the other side, in the story, there are other boats. There's no indication that the other boats don't make it either. It seems like they all do. Because they're inspired to ride through the storm. God's presence in our life isn't about cor connect, correcting things. It isn't about making things different with us having to do nothing. It's about inspiring us to be able to make those things work, to get through those things, to handle those things. Even, even in the deepest grief, it isn't about God taking that away. It's about knowing that God is there. In the moments of the greatest joy, it isn't about how, thank you, God, for making that happen. It's about, thank you, God, for being here with me in this moment of joy and celebration. Not that you controlled things to create it, but that you inspired things to make it happen. Sometimes, and I think for me personally, as fascinating as I find that Star Trek story, here's why I think it doesn't work. Not for us, anyway. We think we know our stories, and sometimes what we know is what we turn them into. David and Goliath has become a symbol of the underdog, of the, the little standing up against the big, or the weak against the powerful. But that isn't really what the story's about. How we know the stories from the Bible and how we use them in our daily life, even expressions, aren't necessarily what they're about. It's not that that's necessarily a wrong thing. It's just that what it does is distance us from the real story. 
it, it causes us to be simplistic about it. And instead of looking at deeper and digging deeper, like I was talking about last week, and peeling away those layers and finding out more and wanting to engage the story and the environment around us that inspires our thinking that it's connected to that story. Instead of doing that, we simply go, oh, it's this. What if it's not? What if we, what if we really, really need instead to look into the, the source of that, that expression, that reference, and find out what it's really about? We need to know our stories because we need to know what is true at the heart of it. And it doesn't matter, it doesn't, honestly doesn't matter whether you tell the story of David and Goliath as he threw a rock with a sling and then chopped the guy's head off, or whether he slipped on a banana peel and smacked him on the head with a beat. It doesn't matter. The point is that God was there inspiring the spirit of David. It doesn't matter whether you tell the story of Jesus and the disciples in the storm as Jesus commanded nature to stop or that he inspired them to ride out the storm. As long as you remember that the point of the story is the presence of God, the presence of the Spirit, however you understand God, the presence of the Spirit that got them through because the end of the story is the key part. They did get to the other side. They kept going. And we all do.